Valentino Petrarca here with One Shot Entertainment. And now we've got this new series, Set the Record, where I interview a lot of artists and kind of get a lot of their inspiration behind a lot of really, really cool stuff. And today I'm joined with Landon Tours, an incredible artist. How are you doing today, Landon? Very good. It's been a, a long, productive day. Just uh, doing a bunch of music stuff, like always. So yeah, it's been good. Yeah, and, and that's actually a great first question to start with is obviously, you know, a lot of people are busy with, you know, musicians doing stuff, but none particularly quite like you, where you've always got some solo stuff going on, plot and you stuff going on, you have constant EPs and albums. How have you been, you know, productive during the year of 2020, no shows? Yeah, honestly, I think this is the most productive I've ever been, like last year, I think, like it kind of like changed my perspective on a lot of things, you know, like I, since I've been touring for like the past like 12 years, I think the longest break I got was like six months, you know what I mean? So there was never any time to like get into like a, a home regiment that would like stick, you know what I mean? Like I could never even stick to like a, a constant like workout routine or anything like that, you know what I mean? So it's been nice to finally like experience what having like a normal, just like repetitive home life is like. And it's honestly been great for me because like, my work ethic, I, I feel like has skyrocketed. I've gotten more done, like I said, this year than I think I ever have in a, in a full year. And it's just been like, I've been writing for other bands and other artists too, like producing other people and stuff. So I just try to stay as productive as possible. Cause if I don't, then I start to melt away and turn into a piece <laughs> of shit. So yeah, I mean, literally like I have to stay productive or I just fall apart. So that's honestly like one of the hardest parts about touring for me and too is like when I'm on the road, there's so much downtime, it, downtime, it kind of like messes with my head, you know? Mm -hmm. So yeah, I mean, for me, I know it's been rough for a lot of people, but for me, it's honestly, it was kind of a, a, a godsend. It was pretty awesome. <laughs> yeah. And it's interesting to hear you say that because I've talked to a few artists about, you know, not being able to tour. And I think mm -hmm. Ice Nine Kills and you are the two artists that have just said like, we go crazy. So it's nice to have like a bit of a break. You know, it's nice yeah. to actually just relax for a bit. Yeah. Like after our last album cycle, I, th I think it was like, I think we did like six to eight it was like close to eight months of touring off that last record. And it was just like nonstop. And I just got married and shit. So it was like, I don't know. I was like, I was losing my mind. It was tours back to back too. Like we did a, yeah. like a U.S. to Europe to Australia run. And like, dude, after that, I was like, I don't even know if I'm going to do this anymore. <laughs> this is not fun. <laughs> so yeah. I think it's like, it's been a good reset. You know what I mean? I think once things come back, I'll actually be excited to do it rather than dreading it and having mental breakdowns before they happen, <laughs> you know? Yeah. And that's a good point, especially as I said, you know, you constantly are putting out a ton of music that mm -hmm. when you put out so much music, you have to tour on a lot of that. So it's just like a yeah. never ending go, go, go. Exactly. Which honestly, like not having those breaks, it, you kind of like take it for granted. You know what I mean? Like I remember mm -hmm. playing shows in front of like thousands of people some nights and just not even, I didn't even care. It felt like nothing. I was just so like, I want to go home so bad that that's like all I can think about. Yeah. So it's, it's nice. You have to have like those breaks in between. And I, I hope that moving forward, that touring is kind of like more spread out, at least for me and my, my band and stuff. Like I'd rather do like two really big, cool tours a year than like six to eight months of just, you know, kind of the same stuff. It, it just wears on you really hard. Yeah. And it almost makes you feel like uh, it, when you see the band live and when you see you live, it's more special if it happens, you know, exactly. a little bit more spread out versus if you, if I see you like five times a year, it's like, Oh, it's just another show kind of thing. Yeah. And it's like, people got used to basically, it's like, Oh, well I missed them this month. They'll be back in like two or three months on this tour. It's like, yeah, you're, you're totally right. Like it loses all of its value. And like, you know, there's, there's nothing special about it anymore. So I, I hope that this is like a, I hope it turns into a positive for the music scene, you know? Cause I mean, I, I think it should be more like how the rap and like pop world is, you know, you put a record out and then you do one special tour where you go all out. You know, I'd rather do that than anything, you know. Yeah, especially in, in the rock scene, you're right, where it's just, it's always like constant, constant tours. And I, I get why it is that way. It's, you know, bands, a lot of bands only make money from doing that. So it's not mm -hmm. so much like they want, it's more out of necessity, you know, to like <laughs> have a stable income, which I totally get. But yeah, I like, I like being home. <laughs> yeah. 
So now I kind of want to take it back a bit into March. Where were you when this pandemic erupted and everything started to shut down? And what was kind of going through your head? So I was living downtown Detroit, like right. And I'm not sure if you're familiar with the area at all. Are you? No, not Detroit, sadly. Okay. So there's this like big venue that every like touring band knows of. It's uh, St. Andrews Hall. It's like an iconic place. So I live basically right across the street from there. So like my friends would come and play like, I'd have like a new friend almost every week come through. So we were like two or three weeks away from, um, from doing a, a European tour. And uh, I also, they wanted me to finish the record before the tour. And I only had like five songs done. So I was like, fuck, like I had just rented out this brand new studio to downtown. And I like dumped a lot of money into it and everything signed a year long lease so like I, I'd made some pretty big moves before it happened. And then, but honestly, whenever we found out like the tour was getting canceled, I was so stoked because I was like sick, like hopefully, you know, things will be shut down for a couple of months and I can take that time to write and finish this record. Little did I know, like <laughs> the whole world is going to be flipped upside down. But I was honestly, it's fucked up to say, I was kind of excited about the fact that like, I'm going to have a real excuse to not do the stores so that I can focus on something. So I was really, really stoked at first, but then like everything that was cool about living downtown was immediately gone. You know what I mean? Like I couldn't even go to the gym anymore. Like it was scary getting groceries. So it's like, yeah. And then it just didn't stop. So yeah, it started out as a positive and then it's like, it just got weird. It never got negative for me, but it got weird. But so because of COVID, me and my wife ended up buying a house and stuff. So we got out of the city. So yeah, it, it, it changed a lot of things, but so for the most part, I feel like it was all positives, you know? Well, congratulations on the house. That's awesome. Yeah, yeah, um, yeah. But I definitely see what you're saying from your perspective. Like when you're an artist, you want everything you, to put out to be your best work, you know, the best yeah. that you can do in that moment. And if you have the pressure of, I've got to get this record out ASAP, they're yeah. putting a hard deadline on this. I, I want to make sure it's the best it can be, but I don't know if I can do that with these time constraints to almost right. have that lifted. That's got to be a really, really freeing feeling. Oh yeah. I was like, dude, I was horrified. I was like, <laughs> cause I wasn't even really in the mood to write, you know, and I really have to be in the mood to make good stuff. Like I never try to force it really. So I was just like, fuck, this is going to be like our worst record. <laughs> so I was, yeah. I was very, very happy. And you know, now we've had like, I mean, close to a year, you know, I mean, not even counting the time that we had from our last record to, you know, finish a new one. So it's just been like, it's been awesome being able to fine tune it like a thousand times over. And then I get bored and I can just stop for a month or two and then come back to it when I feel like it, you know, I wish it could be that way with every record, honestly, because <laughs> I think it's like, it's been very beneficial for the, the one that we're, you know, sitting on right now. So yeah, <laughs> definitely. Now, obviously, I definitely want to go into frontal lobe submission. But before we do, I want to yeah. ask, is this new plot record going to be in the same vein as disposed? Or is it going to be an entirely new thing? It's I mean, it's not so different that like, you wouldn't think it was like a different band or anything. But it's it's very different in terms of like production and um, kind of bringing back some elements of like, the the record before disposed. So kind of just taking all the elements that we felt like worked for each record and like putting them, trying to put them in one thing that fits really well while also trying to elevate it, you know, cause like every, every, every record I'm trying to make better, obviously. So I kind of took, yeah, like I said, just took some of my favorite things from each record, especially happiness and self-destruction and dispose kind of melded those two together and then made something that like I would listen to now, or I would like, you know, be excited about now especially in terms of like heavy stuff i don't really like listen to or like writing heavy stuff that often so i made it like a challenge to make head like heavy writing heavy music fun for me again you know what i mean which was a cool challenge and i i, I think it like i think it worked out pretty well so i think it's a good balance i think people will dig it for sure I'm super excited to hear it because I know um, I heard Happiness and Self-Destruction when it first came out and then I was like, this is incredible. And then I heard Dispose. And I was like, this is also incredible, but this is a totally new sound. It was like a complete, like cool shift in, in tone. So it's going to be kind of cool to hear those two records melded together. 
Yeah, I'm excited. It's like I said, it's been a long process of making it. And honestly, it's the end is still nowhere in sight. Like we're st- we on like it sucks to say admit that, but like yeah, we have no idea at this point what we're going to do cuz as of right now, it seems like I mean, I could be wrong. I'm sure this isn't every case, but it seems like bands put out records and then people talk about it for like a week or two and then it's like gone. You know what I mean? Cuz like what else can you do other than put out more videos and content and stuff? you know, there's just, there's nothing to really promote. So I guess you just got to be really smart about like your timeline of putting out content, you know, and keeping it consistent. Cause I've seen so many of my friends bands put out really good records and they just kind of like get lost because other bands are like pu- pumping out shit constantly, you know? Yeah. So we, we just wanted to be mindful of that and be, you know, smart about how we go about this. So still trying to figure out what the fuck to do yeah. that's a really great point because i know um i think it was in august of 2020 i was mm-hmm. scrolling through instagram and i saw that ben barlow of neck deep had posted a picture and mm-hmm. the one of the things he was talking about was i spent like two to three years crafting this record my absolute baby and then in a week and a half no one's talking about it anymore it's just what do yeah. i do now like where do i go from this yeah and it was just kind of him opening up on instagram about like i'm really conflicted so I, I see what you're saying how that can be a struggle to yeah I mean yeah that would have been the same for us too you know like I can't imagine putting out this record that I spent you know literal literal years <laughs> like trying to craft and then yeah it's just like it's whatever it's just thrown into the universe to float around you know so I yeah I guess we're just still trying to figure out like I mean people are talking about I saw Dance Gavin Dance just posted that they're doing a tour starting in September so like, I don't know what the, maybe they know some shit I don't know, but you know, I guess we'll just like play it by ear and see when it makes sense. But I think it, we've all pretty much agreed that we want to put the record out when we can play it live, you know? So yeah. we'll see what happens. Good stuff. I know that we're super excited and looking forward to hearing it. Um, switching gears a bit and going into frontal lobe submission. How long have you been writing this solo EP? Tell me a little bit about, you know, the process that went into this. Yeah, so I started, um, when did the pandemic start? It, like the March, lockdown started in March, right? Yeah. Yep. So coming up on a year, um, yeah, I, I just started it pretty much as soon as everything locked down. Cause I had that, like I said, I had that studio that I just rented out. And uh, so, and all of my work went away, you know, for the whole summer and like one week because of COVID. So I was just like, all right, well, I'm paying for this place. I might as well go over and write. So I just started out. I, I wrote the the last song that's on the EP, the acoustic one. I wrote that one first. And then I wrote When I'm Gone. And, or, sorry, uh, Gave My All. And so it was going to be, it started out, I was going to do just like an acoustic EP. And then over time, it just started to morph into this weird thing that it is now, you know. But, um, yeah, it was just like, whenever I like really felt like writing, that was kind of the thing I would go to, you know, just like, let's experiment, let's do, you know, shit all over the place, like anything to like, I don't know, just kind of exercise that, that muscle, you know, so it was all, I mean, they're all very different from each other. And I I kind of intended it to be that way, just kind of all over the place, but they ended up somehow melding together well enough to be cohesive (laughs) enough to put on the same thing. But yeah, it was just like my baby for, you know, the past year, just having fun, you know, whenever I felt like it, but yeah, a lot of work went into it. I, I just like every, every week or two, I'd revisit certain songs and like, you know, tweak like, uh, transitions and ways to make things pop harder. And you know what I mean? So it was like, I think this is the most I've ever scrutinized my own work and like really meticulously crafted each and every tiny part of everything, you know? So Mm. yeah, it was fun. I had a blast writing it. And you're right. Like every song it's distinctive, but it's also like it fits in the EP, but it's, it's also very, very different. Like, I think the way I described it when I was telling people about it was it's like controlled chaos where yeah. like, you know, you go from gospel therapy, the opening track, which is just insane to kind of the very like, you know, fun indie rock of like, kill me, you know, and it, it works, but like, Thank it's you. crazy how it works. <laughs> I appreciate it. That's good to hear. <laughs> yeah. Now, specifically Gospel Therapy, tell me a little bit about, again, that song and just the chaos in that song, because that's a pretty, like, fun, manic song. Yeah, I mean, that one was probably the most inspired by COVID, because it's just, like, you know, it's basically just a trail of thoughts, you know, so, like, literally every sentence, there's nothing, like, left to interpretation. Everything that is said in that song is just what it is, you know what I mean? So it goes from kind of just, like, 
somber and hating everything to like kind of cocky and like feeling on top of the world because I'm like doing a lot of shit you know like I'm, I'm staying productive and then it kind of goes back to hating the world again and so, <laughs> so like that song was like written over the course of like like the summer when everything was just total fucking chaos in the world so yeah it was just kind of my thoughts on the state of the world i guess and like my own internal demons and shit so that's kind of like the theme of the whole thing but the whole ep but that was kind of jam-packed into i think that's why i put it first is it kind of like sets you up for the rest of the bullshit so <laughs> i also yeah. think that like the fact that like the ep starts out with that like slow kind of like synthy piano and then it just kicks in is is a great start to the ep too thanks i appreciate it yeah that one that one was by far the most fun to write that was <laughs> Uh, the next thing I do, I want to do like a whole record or EP of songs that are just like that. That's still, I think that's still my favorite one. Mm. Yeah. And I, I even love like, you know, you have this in a lot of your work as well. Those like cool, almost I'll call it like self-referencing moments where it's like breaking the third wall of music. Like when you like, you know, you're, you're screaming really heavy and then you go, take it back. And then you start singing nice and slow. And you know, you've yeah. got like on She Thinks of Me, that part where it's like, okay, too much, too much, too much. And then the song yeah. kind of goes back like... <laughs> I love those moments in your music. I think it's like super, it makes it super special. Well, that part in particular is funny because uh, the, okay, tame it down a bit part. I yeah. put that in there because I, I was showing my friend Miles. He's the dude that's in like all, pretty much all of my solo videos. I was showing him the song. He's like, dude, I feel like it gets, it's too intense at first. <laughs> and I was like, you should say it. And then I told him what to say and he voice recorded it and sent it to me. I was like, okay, perfect. And then he was like, all right, actually, I do like it now. <laughs> so it worked out. But yeah, I'm always just like, because I mean, I analyze my own shit. You know, I'm I'm my own listener to my own stuff because I, I like to listen to it as much as possible to kind of, especially at different points of the day or like how I'm feeling to see like how it affects me to see how it would affect the listener. I'm just trying to like freshen my ears as often as possible to see like how other people might perceive it and so getting his perspective on that I was like okay like how do I chill it down and then bring it back up you know so I just try to like listen to my music as like another listener and sometimes I'm just like oh yeah that went too far or, like you know this is and also like I love I love when rappers do shit like that and I don't really notice anybody in this scene doing things like that so it's yeah. just kind of like I guess that could be something another fun element to add you know <laughs> definitely and I also feel that like this EP in particular definitely has elements of all your previous work. Like it's got some of the more like, you know, technology elements of withdrawals, but it's got some of the acoustic stuff from like dynamite. You know what I mean? Um, mm -hmm. So I see what you're saying in the sense that like you try to go on with a completely fresh set of ears because it, it, it kind of feels like almost like a melting pot of all of the work you've done in the past. Yeah, for sure. I, uh, yeah, especially like, um, like dynamite, that was a, the one that I really wanted to grab from again, because I've, I've still and I still do want to do something kind of more in that vein in the future. But yeah, I took like the very few things that people liked about withdrawals, because I feel like that one kind of went over a lot of people's heads. <laughs> I think I went a little too weird on that one. But I took like the very few things that worked <laughs> from that and kind of implemented it. But yeah, it's always weird to see like what sticks and what doesn't, you know, <laughs> And it's because I, I always feel like sometimes I, I feel like, oh, yeah, everyone's going to love this. And then it just totally flops. And then some things I'll put out and like, there's no way anybody's going to attach to this. And then that ends up being the thing. That, so I feel like my gauge just sucks. I have no idea. <laughs> I, I, yeah. yeah it's funny you say that because even like with withdrawals like i love withdrawals but it took me like three or four listening like oh i think i'm starting to get this now because i remember yeah. the first listen i think it was on the second song where it's like a minute of growling in the beginning and i was like yeah. what, what? like it was so funny it was just so cool yeah. <laughs> yeah i feel like it's funny i feel like that record now is getting more uh recognition than it did like the first week that it came out like people are starting to dig further back in my discography and like discovering these songs it's like man i wish people would have cared back when i was like touring on it and stuff you know because when that first came out i was on a tour and I, so i was playing mainly songs off of that and people were just like what the fuck is this <laughs> so but at least you know it's catching on now so whatever <laughs> <laughs> yeah and i think withdrawals is definitely one of those um one of those albums that like you kind of have to listen start to finish like I, yeah. I would never shuffle play withdrawal i feel like that's like a weird thing to do like if i'm gonna yeah. listen to it i'm starting from the top and i'm finishing at the end you know yeah well that's cool to hear i like that <laughs> <laughs> good stuff so now another question i kind of wanted to ask you was 
you've obviously been like scrutinizing a lot of this. You've been like going into this, tweaking everything you can. At what mm-hmm. point do you realize, okay, this is done for the public now? Like, when is that aha moment? Dude, it's different every time. With this one, it was like, I kind of gave myself a deadline because I had been, I'd been working on it for honestly too long to the point where it's like, I could keep adding shit for the rest of my life if I wanted to, you know, but like, I really want to put this out. I really like these songs. So I set a date. I think the date was like December 15th or something like that. I was like, I'm going to upload these songs September 5th or sorry, December 15th, no matter what state they're in, as long as the mixes are good. And uh, so literally up until I think midnight of that (laughs) night, I was still tweaking shit. And then finally it's like, okay, it's done. I like it. But when it comes to other things, like sometimes I get rushed, you know, like even dispose. um, I wish I could have had a little bit more time. There are still things that I hear every time I listen back that I was like, I wish I could have had a little bit more time on that. But yeah, I mean, with the solo stuff, it's never, ever rushed in any, you know, capacity. It's always whenever I feel like putting it out, which is honestly awesome. I love that freedom, but not that I've been super rushed by labels or anything either. It's just like, sometimes there has to be a hard cutoff time, you know what I mean? To keep the ball rolling. So yeah, it's different with every release, but I, I, I pick and, you know, I nitpick things for as long as I possibly can before I put them out. So, yeah. (laughs) Yeah. Does your solo stuff influence a lot of like the plot in you or is the writing process completely separate? That's the thing. It's like, sometimes I'll sit down and I I don't really even know what I'm going to write. It just like starts to come out and then, you know, midway through, I'm like, oh, this could be like a plot song or, oh, this could be a silly, you know what I mean? Or this could be for somebody completely different. Um, but the, but then there are also times where it's like, okay, it's getting to be that time again. Like I need to start writing plot songs. Then I'll sit down and, you know, and very intentionally be writing stuff that I know could work for the band and vice versa with the solo stuff too. Like if, you know, I've got a couple months off and I've got the time, it's like, okay, let's, let's do something solo. Let's like really go crazy and like fuck around. So <laughs> I guess the biggest difference is with plot, I hate to say it, but there is like somewhat of a ceiling, you know what I mean? Mm-hmm. Like not, not like crazy or not in a way that's like hindering me from having fun or anything like that. But it's like, I couldn't put out just a straight up pop song, you know what I mean? Oh, like yeah. 808s and, you know, just shit like that for plot. Whereas with the solo stuff, I could write a fucking funk song if I wanted to, you know what I mean? Like it really doesn't matter. And people have kind of grown accustomed to, they basically know like to not really expect anything because you know it's so all over the place so i think i definitely have a little bit more fun with the solo stuff because of that freedom you know but i still enjoy both it's both they're both a good time it's just yeah with plot i know there has to be <laughs> i can't go totally off the wall you know you can't I, put f pacing into plot like that would no, that would be weird <laughs> or god yeah or gospel therapy or something you know what yeah. i mean so yeah now, one of my favorite stories, I've, I've seen a lot of interviews and like one of my, fa- I, I get a kick out of this every time I hear it, I love it, is, you know, you were, obviously you write with other songwriters. You, when you were writing with a songwriter, you wrote Rigged and Disposable Fix. Nick, sorry, these are too cool. I'm keeping these. Yeah. <laughs> I, I, think well, I, I, yeah. I think it happened in the same day too. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Just back to back, like, oh, okay, I'm sorry. This is too awesome. I'm, I'm taking this from my band. I'm sorry. <laughs> yeah, dude, I felt so bad. I felt so fucking bad because this dude was like paying me for my time. But I, I mean, I ended up writing him a really cool song that worked for him. And in hindsight, yeah. I don't think either of those songs would have made any sense for him anyways. I was just in this weird wavelength, but... But yeah, I, I felt a little bad, but we ended up we ended up making it work for him. So it's all good. <laughs> <laughs> Has that happened again? Like when, when you're writing songs with other people now, is there still moments like, I'm sorry, like I just got to take that for the plot in you, or I'm sorry, this would be perfect on like, you know, frontal lobe submission kind of thing. Yeah, dude, all the time, <laughs> literally all the time. I, I was actually, I was writing for a band like three or four months ago and they wanted me to write like kind of a, just like a more rock track. And uh, <laughs> I sat down, I started to write it. I got like halfway through and I, I sent him like the first verse and chorus He's like, dude, this is fucking sick. And then I wrote the next verse and chorus. And I was like, yeah, you're right. I, I can't <laughs> need to keep this. So I was like, I was like, dude, I'll give you your money back. <laughs> like, yeah. or, or I'll, I'll keep trying. He's like, no, please. I was just like, nah, dude, I'm, I have to give you your money back. <laughs> but, I love that. That's so yeah. funny. You can't help it though. Sometimes, you know what I mean? And I, I never sit down like thinking like I, I want to write something 
I don't, I, I don't know. It's hard. It's, I never like sit down with much intention. You know, I just kind of like let things flow. So sometimes it's, it's sick and sometimes it's too sick. <laughs> you know, I guess that's the best it's way. It's like to it. if it comes out, it comes out and I'm taking it. But if not, then that's all right too. Yeah. And I mean, I never like cheat anybody, you know, like I'm always fair about it, but yeah, sometimes it's just, yeah, it, it's almost like accidental. It's like, I can picture my voiceover and what I would do, you know? And sometimes it's just like, yeah, I can't let go of that. <laughs> <laughs> I love it. I absolutely love it. So now another thing about this new EP that I'm dying to know the title frontal lobe submission. That is yeah. Arguably one of the coolest titles I've ever heard. Where did that come from? How did you think of that? That is so awesome. Well, basically it was like, well, I, I'd been thinking about like an album title for a long time because I had those songs done and like, and I was, me and my wife were like sitting in the car, like driving somewhere and we we're just talking about the frontal lobe and stuff like that. And like how basically people just like fuck themselves so hard that it's just like it just destroys it you know it's so basically it's all just about like i mean i had i had a period of time with once like the covid stuff happened and i literally couldn't socialize or do anything like started like drinking again like way too much and stuff like that which was just like making me a total worthless idiot so it's just like that that just feels kind of fitting just like purposefully making yourself stupid you know what i mean like so that's basically the theme of it just like I mean, there's tons of lines about, you know, self-abuse and stuff like that. Just like, yeah, just, I mean, pretty much just submitting your brain, like holding it in a choke lock, just like, <laughs> I'm not going to let you do anything good. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that, that's kind of the whole theme of the thing, but luckily I got out of it. I'm getting healthy now, so. <laughs> awesome, awesome. I love it. I love it. Um, so the biggest central theme of this whole record, you would say, is that like self-abuse that like constant, like, I know this is bad for me, but I'm going to do it anyway kind of thing. Yeah, exactly. Which I, I know tons of people, you know, through the COVID thing have like really struggled with that just out of boredom. You know what I mean? Like I'd, I'd never had like a serious problem with you know, substance abuse. Well, I, I had like way in the past, but like in my later adult years, you know, okay. so it was like, I literally didn't know what to do with myself. So I just started like indulging way more. Like it was one of those things you don't really realize you're going down that path again. You know what I mean? It's just like one day you just wake up and you're like, oh fuck, like I've been doing this for like two weeks straight. You know what I mean? Yeah. So it's, yeah, it was just one of those moments where it was just like, fuck, I'm like, I'm like really getting, getting down there again. <laughs> so, so yeah, I just had to scoop myself back up. But yeah, I mean, those things just happen. That's life, you know? So I know like, with the pandemic, it's obviously been hard on a lot of different people in a lot of different ways. But for someone like myself, I am an extreme extrovert. Like I love to talk yeah. to people. I love to hang out. I love all that right. stuff. And um, it's definitely been very gloomy with kind of like that ability of seeing one or two people and that's it, you know? Um, yeah. Yeah. yeah so some, people, some people dealt with it better than others, you know, like at first for like the first month or two, I was like, this is fucking awesome. I love, <laughs> I love this so much. I'm just like, I have an excuse to not hang out with anybody or socialize. Like, and I'm super introverted. I like my, I like to socialize when I feel like it, but for the most part, I'm like, I like to just be at my house working. You know what I mean? Like that's yeah. my Zen. So for me, it was cool at first, but then after a couple months, I was like, damn, this is like, this is getting kind of heavy, you know, like, <laughs> I'm legally not supposed to see my friends. Like I can't collaborate with anybody. Like it, it was weird. So yeah, that's when I started to like go down the, the dark path that kind of led to me writing this shit anyway. So exactly. Cause when it first happened in March, everyone's like, Oh, well by July we'll tour. And I know like a right. ton of people rescheduled their tours to July and August, like everybody. And then, um, so there was like an end in sight at that point, but then of okay. course, as we know, there was, there still isn't, still is not an end in sight right now kind of thing. Yeah. Um, we have no idea. Yeah. It's crazy to think that it, it literally might be 2022 before like realistically, yeah. like, who knows? But I mean, I, like I said, you know, dance, Gam dance posting that to where I saw a couple other people posting about like December of next year or of this year. I mean, sorry. So, I mean, who knows? I just think it's kind of silly that anyone's trying to act like we know what's actually going to happen, you know, like yeah. let's just play it by year. So I think that's how everybody should kind of be handling it. Just like, you know, we'll just week by week, take it for what it is, you know? So. And I know that like the plot in you, the, you know, open for Dance Gavin Dance on that Under Oath tour. You open for, I, I believe, Tillian on his solo stuff. So yeah. you guys are definitely, you know, 
you're in the yeah. same scene you know each other very well so that's got to be super cool to like you know see all this, this stuff that, that's happening with them and yeah i mean i hope it works out for them that'd be so sick for their tour to, i mean they got fucked so hard like the oh, first yeah. day the first day of that headliner on their new record i think it, i think yeah they were like parked outside of the venue or something for their very first show and i got shut down i was just like fuck that's so rough such a bummer but yeah i hope it works out for them though that that would be awesome <laughs> and hopefully yeah. that'll start like you know the trail of people like feeling comfortable to do it again i definitely respect them for not like delaying the release you know i know a lot of people yeah. like it was supposed to come out like in april or march and then they just pushed it back like four or five months and then it yeah. by the time that happens like the fans aren't even excited about it anymore it's still just like oh right. god it's supposed to come out like nine months ago or whatever whereas yeah. um i really respect like dance gavin dance and all time low those two bands in particular for like sticking to their guns kind of like yeah. Yeah, i think the used did that too actually yeah, yeah. Yeah, we we probably should have, but we didn't. <laughs> but we you also like, didn't have the songs written yet. That's the thing is there were still songs that still needed to be written. So. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Yeah, we yeah, yeah. we were just really like, nah, that's, there's no chance. Like we don't want to. <laughs> so whatever, we'll see what happens. <laughs> and I know, speaking as a plot and you fan, I would much rather wait a few years and get a phenomenal record than get like one every year and have it be kind of. Eh. <laughs> I mean, luckily, yeah, people kind of expect that out of us anyways. Everyone knows that we're lazy and we, we put out a record like every three or four years. Just like, <laughs> we're probably the slowest band at putting out records, but we you just got to take your time with it, you know. So and plus, I you know, at least I put out some stuff in between on my own. So hopefully that holds people over a little bit. <laughs> yeah, definitely. So now, um, you know, thank you so much again for talking with me today. I have yeah, one more question kind of from a little bit of the past. This yeah. is a question that I've been holding on to for, I want to say, three years now, maybe two years. Um, mm -hmm. I interviewed, you know, you with the plot and you back in 2019, but it was more of a plot and you interview. So I didn't want to like, you know, oh, ask okay. more about I, the story. Yeah, now I knew you looked familiar. I was, <laughs> yeah, okay. Yeah, I think it was Sonic Temple in Columbus, Ohio. So yeah, Okay, gotcha. Cool. phenomenal show phenomenal festival oh, yeah. um, but um the question that i had was i was dying to know about scattered shit that song yeah. is just crazy it's insane like any insight you have behind that song because it starts out like slow acoustic and then it gets like really funky and then it just gets weird and i yeah. love it and I, I i can't even i can't even put it in a genre because it's just so <laughs> crazy I, I I can't get enough of it. So any insight you have into that, I would be appreciative. <laughs> Dude, I, I'm glad you asked because I think only my friends know about this story, but it's actually, it's kind of funny. So I was living at my old apartment in Detroit, which was a fucking shithole apartment. It was awful. And uh, one night, like I, I, I hadn't drank in a while. And one night I was just like, I really want to get super, super fucked up and write something. Just whatever happens, happens. I'm not going to re-record anything. Like, first take everything. And by the end of that song, like, I, I don't even remember, like, <laughs> writing most of like, half of the end. And then I woke up the next day. I was like, I laughed so hard listening <laughs> back to it. And I sent it to, like, all of my, like, close friends. And like, dude, you have to put this out. This is so funny. <laughs> And I was like, no, there's no way I'm putting that out. And then I think it was like three or four months later, I went back and listened to it again. I laughed like super hard again. And, and I think I had a friend. Over, I think, yeah, I was showing a friend and, uh, and he was like, dude, yeah, you should put that out for sure. So I just decided to upload it to TuneCore. I was flipping through my phone to find like a picture to make the album artwork. I was like, fuck it. <laughs> this is just as random as the song. So <laughs> yeah, that's the story. That is and perfect. I, I feel like it was worth the two year wait that I had for that question. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that it lived is, up to the hype. <laughs> so stupid. It's the dumbest song ever. <laughs> I, I love it. Like literally within the first like four seconds of the song, it's like, who the fuck put Jason Statham in a shark movie? Like it, it's just... <laughs> Off the bat, you know what you're getting into, and that's why I love it so much. <laughs> well, if, if you like that one, me and my friend, um, that dude that I, that plays all the solo shows with me, um, him and I wrote like a four song EP that we've been sitting on, and it is insane. It's just <laughs> all just like ideas like that. Just super, nothing really makes sense. It's just like basically like, like like scribbling all over a piece of paper and calling it art. That's the equivalent to what we did. <laughs> 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 it's not there are parts that are like funny and cool but for the most part it's just like chaos so will it ever get released soon or 
at some point we'll put it out. I, I have no idea. There's even like a Latin dance song on it. Oh, I'm so where, excited. Where we both rap. <laughs> I am so excited. I cannot <laughs> wait for this. <laughs> yeah, we'll see. We'll see what, I, I know he's like trying to put out some music first before we put it out because that could like, if that was the first thing that came out with his name on it, it'd probably like instantly ruin him. So. <laughs> <laughs> I love it. I love it. Well, I'll be tuning in and making sure whenever that drops, I'll be the first person to hear it. Oh yeah. I appreciate it. You'll so probably like, be our only fan. <laughs> I love it. I love it. Uh, so again, thank you so much for taking time out of your day to talk with me. I really, really appreciate it. Yeah. Frontal lobe submission is available everywhere now. It's phenomenal. If you haven't heard it, you should definitely check it out. Thank you so much again, Landon. Thank you, dude. Appreciate it.